oburu ni chogi akuko nyozo denkegi words of the great african philosopher and nigerian writer chinua achebe when i was a little girl i loved writing stories i would spend a lot of time daydreaming and escaping in my head and write about it at the age of 11 i had written what i considered to be my first story book in pen and paper it was never published in high school i would gather my friends to share my stories and listen to theirs no topics were off limits it was my first experience building a community i was born and raised in nigeria a society that valued job stability financial security and respect for families whose children attained the highest levels of education amongst the stories my parents shared was the news of family friends whose children had gotten scholarships or admissions to study abroad especially for what they considered to be respectable degrees have you heard that Olama has gotten an admission to study engineering at Yale? These were common expressions at home. It was indeed something to be celebrated because these were tremendous achievements. I was never under any pressure to choose a specific career path. But when I moved to the UK and decided to study medicine, I knew it would make my parents proud. During my university holidays, when I would go back home to Nigeria, my father would say to his guests, have you met my first daughter, Adanna? She's a soldier. This title was bestowed upon me by my parents from the first day I stepped foot into medical school. Even before I had a basic knowledge of anatomy, I didn't even know the human body consists of 206 bones. But it didn't matter to my parents. They were proud. Finally, they could brag about their own daughter. In return, I did very well in medical school. With clinical electives at the Charité in Berlin and research experience at Harvard, I had published three research papers before I got into my third year. I graduated medical school and started to work as a doctor. Only this time, I was training to be a real surgeon. At the same time, and with the rise of social media, I started to grow and nurture an online community. I shared stories about my journey through medical school, through medical training, and my journey of combining a career in medicine with motherhood. As my family grew, so did my community. I now have three wonderful children and an incredible online community of nearly one million people who I'm very grateful for. My community, mostly made up of women, could relate to the different shifts in my life, not just in medicine. They would reach out to me to say, wow, Adana, you've inspired me to do this. You've inspired me to change that. So as the years went by, I longed to devote most of my time to this community. But combining this passion with a career in medicine and my responsibilities of motherhood was tough. Slowly, my career started to feel like a brick wall. Every day, every week, every month, I ignored this feeling. The higher the wall became. And of course, quitting medicine was not an option. The thought of the people I would disappoint if I made this choice was terrifying, especially my father. He had a very busy career and spent little time with us as children. 
I still remember one of my proudest moments as a teenage girl. It was one of the few times my father attended a sports event at my high school. And in front of his eyes, I won the 100 meters race competition. The pride in his eyes and the words he spoke to me gave me the highest sense of validation. And I spent the subsequent years of my life desperate to make him proud. How many of you have ever felt torn because the path that you were on, either in your personal or professional life, no longer felt right for you? Thank you. I believe we've all experienced this feeling that changing something that no longer feels right for us may disappoint someone we love or hurt someone we care about. So we hold on for a bit longer and a bit longer, suffering in silence, afraid to move in a different direction. We all have this incredible capacity for growth, for creating and recreating ourselves, but we're often held back, not by our lack of potential, but by our fear of stepping out of line, our fear of failure, our fear of disappointing others, our fear of no longer being accepted or climbing down that pedestal we've been placed. So we continue to limit ourselves. And yet we can all agree that if there were people in our lives we cared about, we would advise them to follow their dreams. That was me advising my online community to have the courage to take action, but held back by my fears and limitations. I embarked on a deeply personal journey a few years ago. Books, meditation, physical exercise, you name it, I did it. This journey helped me realize, understand, and accept that my purpose had truly evolved beyond the four walls of a hospital. So I made a choice. On the 23rd of May, 2019, I published a YouTube video telling everyone, I quit. I quit my job as a doctor. I felt free. That freedom didn't last very long. I got a message from my father with a screenshot of my YouTube video. What is this? Three words powerful enough to make me feel like a complete failure in the eyes of someone who I'd spent my whole life trying to make proud. The guilt was truly unbearable. Until this day, I never responded to that message. It's been four years. We're still in contact, but I fear having that conversation face to face. But I realized in this process that making the choice to live the life you want doesn't mean the absence of fear or guilt. Courage, by definition, is taking action regardless of fear or uncertainty. At the intersection of breaking down the expectations of the people we love and building the life that we want to live, 
is a choice we must make, an action we must take. There's a powerful visualization exercise that has helped me embody this message. And I invite you to come on that journey with me now. So please make yourselves comfortable. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Imagine yourself standing in front of a tall, intimidating brick wall. This wall has been built brick by brick by the limitations you've imposed on yourself, by the expectations of others, and all the labels you've been given. Now imagine yourself holding a big hammer. This hammer is the empowering realization of your courage, your self-belief, your resilience. Feel the weight of it and the strength you have to easily hold it. Now lift that hammer and take the first swing at that wall. You see the bricks fall to the ground. You're too old. You're a disappointment. You're just a stay-home mom. You take another swing. More bricks fall. That title you've been holding on to that no longer serves you. That role you've been playing that no longer brings you joy. With every swing, more and more bricks fall. Feel the liberation as each label and limitation crumbles. Feel the energy of the light that starts coming through the cracks in that wall. That light represents a different version of you. It represents a different talent, a different passion. Stop swinging. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Open your eyes. Let this visualization remind you of your power to define and redefine your life in the face of fear, pain, and stereotypes. This message goes out to everyone, but especially to all women. You are not one thing, but do that one thing that breaks you free from the mold of social norms, that breaks you free from the expectations other people have about your life. Do that one thing that helps you achieve your full potential. Make that choice. It starts with you. This takes me back to the powerful words in the beginning. Oboro ni chogi akukonyozo. Deinkegi. If you don't like the stories that other people have about you, then write your own. Thank you.